Hello everyone, myself Nishtha Shukla and I am a business developer at Webquill. In today's podcast, we have invited Francio Rion from France. He is the CEO of Darentasia. So now let's know more about Darentasia. What is exactly Darentasia? Darentasia is a France-based industrial company who have completed more than 10 years in Russia, Europe and CIS countries. Darentasia has also introduced its online platform named Technostock. Technostock is an online B2B e-commerce platform that sells its industrial products to the buyers. So now, let's welcome our today's guest, Francio Rion. So, hi Francio Rion, how are you? Good Nisha, thank you. Good, good to see you. Everything is going good there? Yes, very well. We are very busy, but everything is fine. Okay, so now I would request you to introduce yourself to our viewers first. Yeah, my name is François Villon. I am CEO and founder of Darantasia. This is a company intended to sell um, and distribute tools for the metal industry uh, to transform metal uh, across Europe, across Eurasia, uh, and to distribute those tools to those manufacturers who are transforming metal. Okay, so like, let's know more about Darentasia. What is exactly Darentasia is? I want to know from your side. So Darentasia, it's a company I created uh, five years ago in order um, to distribute in B2B mode specific tools, um, which are industrial tools, you know, it's uh, Industrial tools, they have a different a specific uh, behavior uh, because the way you purchase them, the way you negotiate the price, the way you present them is very different from conventional consumable, consumable uh, goods, I would say. These require okay. a very specific uh, set of uh, data management because in the industry, you have, let's say, uh, uh, requirement towards quality of the of the goods of the tools you sell of the tolerances you have especially in metal manufacturing and this is managed through very historically through lots of specific catalogs and you can see some example at my right right here where the catalogs present all the tools in their different dimensional iterations that the customer needs so the Antasia it's a company historically uh, to distribute those tools everywhere, uh, but we are using by tradition those catalogs. And at the moment we are having a project to, con to convert these catalogs into, uh, let's say, a layout, an interface, uh, much more oriented to e-commerce. Okay, so like what you were doing exactly before starting your business, like before your startup, what you were doing? Yeah, I was, before that, uh, I was managing supply chain for a big uh, company who has a worldwide footprint and who is distributing spares and uh, supplies everywhere across the world. And uh, I worked in Asia Pacific, I worked in Russia, I worked in Europe and also with American, comp uh, American companies. So uh, I had the perception in my pr past professional experience about managing complex logistic chain, which is distributing comple complex, very complex uh, uh, portfolio of goods. Okay, so like, what is exactly your market? Can you share some thoughts regarding the market mark and uh, like, you know, the products which you are selling? Yeah, our, our customers, as I said, are uh, metal manufacturers. So they have big machines. Uh, very expensive machines and uh, they put metal into these machines, they program, uh, they compute. So um, the, the, the milling operation, turning operations, and they manufacture goods. So these more customers are especially historically in the automotive industry where a, ma a motor an engine is made of full of metal parts. Uh, but you have also we have also aeronautic, we have defense markets, uh, which we aim. By the way, every type of customer who has a need to transform metal, 
wherever you can sit, it could be in every field, uh, you need to have very specific tools and you need to have very peculiar uh, purchasing methodologies, okay? My intention is to be able to deliver uh, to, those, to those guys, to those customers, some very advanced quality tool with a very high ratio of availability for their manufacturing process. Especially, okay. I could add that our first market is uh, in uh, Russia, CIS countries, but we also uh, develop at the moment the European market. Uh, the next also market we have in, uh, in uh, Target are the Middle East, the Africa, but also uh, some of the country in Asia, thinking about India or others. Oh, oh that's great. <laughs> So, like, basically, in every field or in every sector, there are a name called competitors. So, what is your thoughts about your competitors? How you are coping up with them? So, our competitors, there are plenty of players in the distribution of tools industry. But there is something that uh, I know and from where we have started is that historically, uh, vendors of advanced technical tools used to present all their, all their tools in very complex and big paper catalogs. This is a tradition, a practice in my industry. Um, what we are trying to achieve at the moment is to be able to translate those very complex catalogs where products have, let's say, not, what, not five, not 10 attributes. They may have 100 different attributes, dimensional iterations. Uh, our aim is to be able to convert these type of catalogs into a web interface which is uh, designed for the for the for the buyer which delivers to them absolutely exactly the information they need in a qualitative manner so that they are able to perform their purchasing decision the, uh, in a more lean and easy way so to ease their purchasing experience and rather we don't focus too much on the competitions at the moment. The competitions, they have their practice. What we, are try, what we are rather trying to do is to be able to propose a new way to, pro to present to those, to those customers the complexity of the uh, attribute iterations of those products. Okay? And this is what we are working at the moment, is to develop a specific e-commerce interface for this purpose, for the B2B activity. Okay. So now, what is your mission? Actually, like what you are going for? So my mission goal, goal. My, yeah. my goal, my goal is to be, as I said, uh, able to develop uh, this interface of uh, this presentation of those tools. And maybe I can show you an example because what is very specific in the industry, and this is one of my vendors, it's very famous in the world, by the way, uh, very known, producing very high quality tools from Germany. Uh, but you have other vendors, other producing um, metal tools, manufacturing those tools and selling them. What is very specific to my industry, and you can see here, is that unlike, for example, consumable goods that you purchase on Amazon or whatever uh, e-commerce website, for one product, you may have a, a, a lot of very different dimensional iterations. You see here. So my goal, our goal, is to be able to take those data, put them into a system, we call it a product information manager, manager which is kind of a catalog, a database of attributes, I would say, and the, uh, transfer this information into an e-commerce interface. You see? So for this purpose, we are developing both the Product information manager server, which hosts all this okay. complex information, as well as the e-commerce website, who will render all this information in a fashionable way for the customer. Okay, and in between, there is as these two worlds, these two systems are not connected with each other. We are using your solutions to be able to connect to transfer the data from one uh, instance to the other. On the first instance, which will gather all the technical data of the goods, we will have uh, we have a team of people enter, entering the data into the catalog of those catalogs into the system, right? Preparing all the attributes of the products, and then 
uh, in a second stage using your technology, transferring all these data to the to the CMS, to the e-commerce website. Okay. So like how you get inspired, there must be some incident or something happens with you related to product or an organization. How get you inspired to, you know, to start up a business to Darant Asia? Yeah. It was, it was even before Darant Asia because I had a real patient myself for metal manufacturing. And over the last, I mean, 10 years, over 10 years, I purchase quality tools everywhere in Europe, and I realize that every time I have to deal with these complex catalogs, I never find a vendor, a, a platform, a website who propose in a very compact way all those products uh, straight out of the uh, site to be able to choose them, etc. And I realize this solution does not exist. Then, five years ago, I heard about the PIM, the PIM solutions existing on the market. But as I started to put on the shelves, you know, I have PIM, I have solutions allowing me to manage complex catalogs of products. I have CMS who are able to, to sell goods to the customer. Uh, I don't have anything to join them together. And I discovered a bad web call connector. You, you are offering a technology allowing me to transfer very complex and structured data from one system to another in a very... Uh, um, effective way means that with all the parameters required and so on. And this is why the project of e-commerce has started because I was able to connect two big things thanks to your solution. And since then, I started to uh, test, deploy the solutions that I, ne I need to deliver this ultimate uh, interface, customer interface, I would say. Okay, so like once you are starting something new or you are starting a business, so everybody faces some kind of challenges. You must be facing challenges or you must have faced challenges. So what kind of challenges you have faced in, you know, starting this current Asia? The most difficult thing, I, you know, I'm not coming from the technology, technology industry, so I'm not a programmer. My background is on finance and accounting and operations of order management system. but what was the biggest challenge for me was to learn and get to learn how those systems are working. And I can tell you, I had my share of, of pain and suffering into acquiring the knowledge for main, maintenance and setup and enhancement of uh, systems based on servers who are able to self-operate, who are able to deliver the content. This, honestly, uh, in the experience, I mean, you have plenty of fails at the beginning and you need to get to learn, to acquire some knowledge, at least knowledge sufficiently enough in order to allow you, after a little period of uh, capturing this knowledge, capturing this information, to delegate things which you know you will not be able to do yourself because you need to be, you need to be skilled in lots of fields. Not only IT systems, but also accounting management, financials, inventory management, and all these type of things. You cannot be good everywhere. That's the rule of the, yeah. the rule of thumb. And you need to be able to know enough in order to be capable to describe yourself what are your needs and how the pro the things should be developed, so that you are able to delegate to find around you a community. It can be freelancers a community of experts, you know, or agencies, a community of experts who will help you to develop step-by-step step the idea you have, you have in mind. So the biggest challenge I faced really was to capture enough knowledge to be able to delegate and redistribute the task wisely, meaningfully for people surrounding me and pulled into this project. Yeah, definitely. Like... You know, once we are starting something, we are like, we don't have job. We are starting a business. So we need positive kind of people. If we are having negative kind of people around us. So I think nobody can succeed in doing whatever he wants to do. So do you have those kind of people? Or I guess you must have also been with the negative kind of people who, you know, who have demotivated, like demotivated you. So how you have coping up with them? Also with the motivated and with the demotivated self. 
It's a very good question. And actually, when I think about it, um, you can always recognize um, positive people by the interactions you have with them, by the creativity they bring, and also the attention they take to understand your problem. It's very yes. easy. It's very easy, to, you know, to speak and to say what, he, what is your idea and so on. Uh, but in order to filter and to bring to your project only those who will contribute, there is also, you need also with yourself to be very methodical, methodical. You need to be very organized. And you see behind me, for example, there are plenty of flowcharts, documents. Yeah, because, I can see. Because every time when I create, I, I create something, it's not like, uh, like sending two emails with a, a very compact chapter of what my needs. If I give a room to guessing, I will not be able to, to harvest people who are knowledgeable, else they will think with their own mind and not with my mind. So I spent, in order to limit, uh, to be straight to the point, not to waste my time, but not to waste the time of the people, uh, of the experts working with me, I usually spend a, a wealthy amount of time putting into documentation, very specific, very narrowed, very exhaustive, all the, ex the requirements which are, I'm expecting him or her to deliver. And honestly, with this methodology, I, I always avoided se serious pitfalls, you know? I always, um, I, had some I had some experience where, uh, let's say, an interaction with some expert does not work well and so on and so on. And I identify that most of the time this, co this could be resolved by me, by putting into clear shape everything related to my expectations if you do that you limit the number the amount of wasted time you limit the amount of frustration on both sides you know and that would be kind of uh, i would say my recommendation especially when you can understand in my world we are dealing with very complex complex things so you need to be extremely organized and over the time when you work with people when you create, start to create trust and an engagement toward the technology, um, this is very fruitful. So you know that you know that this person has this set of skills, which is very difficult to find, and you're able to to let's say, let's say expand the knowledge uh, that is shared under, uh, under the project. Okay, so like any advice to people who wants to start up a business like you or who are running a business like you? Yeah, I, I have one advice, which is don't be afraid to fail. You will fail more than you will succeed, especially at the beginning. But if you yeah, are method method methodical, you, you, can, you will start to, I would say, compress gradually the number of fails gradually but it's very slow you will have to invest lots of time to spend maybe your time off your holidays your weekends maybe sometimes your nights working on things but after experiencing you will be able to reduce slowly the number of fails also because during this process you will have a filtering about people involved in your project you will start to keep those who are delivering who are uh, creating value who are helping you to to move forward and you will start gradually to exclude those who are not capable to deliver. Maybe they have willingness, but not, they don't have the sufficient level of skills, or maybe the other way around. And you will not be able to, to develop if you have no resilience to failure. That's the most important thing. And over the time, as I said, after you spend a significant amount of time capturing this knowledge, be, gathering around you the, the good people, you will reduce the portion of failure, you will start to increase the portion of success. But you don't have to be demotivated if after two years you fail constantly. You may have some little wins that you have to, you have to acknowledge and you have to consider these little wins help you to give a step and you can continue to climb the ladder step by step. So you have to be extremely stubborn, well-organized and resilient in this process. Okay, so like, I really want to know how you have gained trust of your customers that you have started a new business and I guess nobody can trust a new person. So how you have gained that trust from the customers? 
How you have so, built up? Actually, well, it's part of the relationship and the trust with the customer. It's uh, honestly, it's very easy to get. Is that you have to deliver what is his expectation? You have to hear from your customer. You have to collect information from your customer, and yeah. and this information, especially in the world of the industry, the people are speaking with each other because themselves they are managing complex projects, so they need to have someone who hear their problems who is capable to offer a solution which deliver on this, on those problems, I would say, which resolve those problems. And this is the, um, as, as the interaction goes, there is a level of trust which, in, which uh, is starting to install in the relationship. And on this trust, you can start to collect more information about their future project, know what are the trends, the big trends of the business, where it goes, and you're able also to consider what is the, the roadmap for your own project and how it should be prepared to cope for their future needs they will have in one year or two or three or maybe five years. Yeah. So like, uh, I guess all the business requires promotion and especially a startup needs a big promotion. So how you do your promotion on an online way through an offline way? So like, what is your strategy for doing promotion? For the promotion, you know, we are not in the B2C world. We don't have things like Black Friday, Christmas, all these type of things, or offers based on the product. Because you see, for one product, you have 200 iterations. You will not be speci do specific discounts. You know, it's not like B2C. The way we have yeah. it is that we are considering to build a club, a club under which you purchase from this platform and uh, access to this club. And depending on the level of, of purchase you exercise, you perform for this platform, you will have a dedicated customized discount for your needs. You will have also have specific inventory reservations that uh, we embed into our own planning sequence. Yeah. And this is the way we kind of uh, give incentiveness for the customer to come back to us. It's especially it's a uh, good quality of information. It's availability of the product for those which are higher runners, but also tailored, I would say, Overall discount for all the purchases on the platform is on the amplitude and the magnitude of the of the um, uh, of the business. Yeah. Okay. So currently, how many members are there in your team? Like how you are managing them? So historically, we are seven. We are working since with the old fashion catalog, right? So we start. We have customers in the in the automotive industry, and on the e-commerce project, we have uh, uh, five people. Uh, freelancers, but also three developing agencies on different fields of the technology we are trying to brick brick together. Okay, so now let's talk about Webcool. See how Webcool have supported you, like in managing your business, and like how we have came through this in five years. Mm, yes, actually, Webcool is at the beginning of my history, Nishta, and. Okay. Uh, it started five years ago. I mean, um, at the foundation, you need to put the big blocks. And as I told you, there is, I, I found two blocks five years ago, which is the CMS. There, are, there is a big community of developers in the CMS, etc. but everything oriented B2C. And me, I want to B2B. So I developed the PIM. And these are the big, big two blocks I had to set together, but they are not connected with each other. When I discovered that WebCurl offers a connector between these two systems, I said, my God, it's, it's unlocking possibilities to transfer very complex structured data to the, to the front end user interface. And this is where my journey has started. My journey has started because thanks to your technology you are developing, I was able to connect together these two worlds. And it gives a tremendous potential. But the difficulty is that the technology are complex. So it took a while to put my hands on them, on those technology, to be able to delegate uh, specific things and to fine tune a little bit also. Because you take things out of the shelves, they are working well for a B2C world, but they are not adapted to my world. So I had to invite you to a long year plan journey to work together to sometimes customize some of, some, of the, some of your tools to be able to match my industrial reality. And this is what happened is that 
uh, I was able to find with WebCurl not only the solution out of the shelves, right, so to say, but also the ability to uh, customize some solution in order to fit to the technology I wanted to deliver. Okay, so like you've been anything... you've been cornerstone. You've been cornerstone in this project. Okay, so like now you have any future plans or thoughts you want to share with us or with our viewers, so you can share. Yes, so uh, there is something very important for me with Web Curl. Uh, your guys, your engineers, uh, and very very helpful for me as a project as a project leader is that, you know, in the history of IT, you, you deploy some resources, but you have to upgrade them. Every year, you have a wave of upgrade of your product. You have to upgrade your CMS. You have to upgrade your, your PIM system or other systems. Um, what, one thing which is very critical is that we have a very complex roadmap. We allocate lots of budget and resources to develop this roadmap, and we are developing features. What is very important is that at the time of the upgrade, we don't waste all the investment we have done before that. And what is, what is the, the, the good thing with WebCut I was able to reach is that when we create together a customization which enhanced the whole, the extension of WebCurl, you were good enough to incorporate, to include those customization into your own product roadmap. It's helping, helping us a lot. Why? It's because when we upgrade our systems, we know that the feature we have developed will be native to your own extension so that we are able to, at the time of the update of the extension, we are able to keep, let's say, everything we have developed and to continue working on all the things which will bring more value, also extra value. So we will be able to kind of incrementally go to the next step of development. And this is very, very important. Please continue to keep this, be, this attitude towards your customer. I mean, obviously when yeah. you have a meaningful customization, is a customization is not super meaningful, but I think with me, we together, we will produce a lot of meaningful customization and enhancement of, of the core product. Yeah. And now, as I said that, we are working on it. We are still have a very juicy roadmap of things we want to develop, of ideas we have. And I can tell you in the industry, it's absolutely endless. So we will continue the partnership and honestly, I'm thinking about uh, now uh, opening e-commerce in India. So you will have to tell oh, me, to great. teach me, to teach me uh, how this market should be approached because it's kind of a discovery. Okay. So that is like very great that uh, if you visit India and you're going to start your business in India, that will be great. So I guess from my end, so that's end. If you want to ask any question or if you still have anything to share, so you can now. I have, by the way, if I want to open e-commerce in India for industrial tools, should I localize it in Hindi or I, I should present all my goods in English? What do you think? Like, basically, it depends on the products, the products which you want to sell. If you are, you know, having a conversation with business B2B, so that will be fine if you are having an English platform for that. But if you want to, you know, pitch for, with others also, so Hindi can be a good option. But as of now, English is the best you can go for. Okay. Thanks for the advice, Nishna. That's very good. Yeah, you I take welcome. it. I take it. <laughs> Thank you so much. So I guess now can we end the session? Yes, we can. And a uh, big thanks to your team, please, on my behalf. Again, to all your developers, your engineers, your specialists. I mean, working with you, it's really a pleasure. And uh, we will continue. We have uh, lots of projects in front of us. OK, from your behalf, I'll thank to my team. And from our team to you, a very happy new year and a Merry Christmas. Thank you, Nishta. Thank you. Goodbye. Yeah, so, yeah, okay. You, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So, that was much about this podcast from my end. Kindly do subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon for further updates from our end. And if you do like the video, kindly give it a thumbs up. And lastly, thanks for watching the video. Have a good day ahead.